dependencies two functions f1 and f2 the semantics of the programming language are such that i actually want the value of b to get the latest value of a that is it should also get the value 5 right obviously i mean i probably not write code like this but it might come up in a slightly more complicated scenario with other instructions between these two for example right so over here i need to make sure that you know what i'm doing is i'm doing a read after write there is essentially you know sometimes this is also called a hazard a read after write hazard i need to make sure that the read occurs properly after the write okay only after the write has succeeded only after a has got updated will i take the value of b now it might seem obvious to you that you know such a thing is this is how it's going to happen but the point is depending on how you implement it right whether this is going to be in terms of registers or whether it is going to be on custom hardware or it is going to be writing into memory you may have a situation where you cannot guarantee that the writing operation of a getting the value 5 happens before uh, b tries to read that value okay and all that this is saying is you need to do that otherwise there is a problem with you know it does not sort of satisfy the meaning of what you are trying to do in the code f2 on the other hand is doing the opposite it takes the value of b it reads the value of b puts it into a and you want to make sure that a gets the old value of b not the updated value which happens in the next instruction b equal to 5 right so this is basically a write after read and like i said there is a form of, in fact, it's a way of writing code in uh, itself that is called single assignment form, right? Where you will say that, I mean, look, what have I done over here? I have taken the value of B and I have copied it into the variable A, right? And now I'm trying to update the value of B, right? But strictly speaking, the old B and the new B, apart from the fact that they share the same name, have nothing in common, right? Because what this effectively means is that from this point onwards, right, after this instant in time, after this assignment A equal to B, or rather after the uh, assignment B equal to 5, I no longer have access to the old value of B, right? So for all practical purposes, I could think of it as a new variable. I could call it B1 or some other name. And as long as I replace all instances of B with B1 moving forward, the program will remain exactly the same. Okay. If you think a little bit closely about it, right, this entire idea of a variable that whose value can be updated, we think of it that way because we are used to programming languages like C, where, you know, that's the normal way of writing code. And why do they do that? Because they don't want to introduce a large number of variables because ultimately each variable gets mapped to a certain location in memory, right? On the other hand, there is an entire class of languages called functional programming languages. Some of you may be familiar with those, right? Functional programming languages essentially follow single assignment, right? A variable is in some sense immutable. It, once it is assigned a value, it cannot be updated, right? So they are all write once. Write once, read many is the approach that is used for uh, variables. Now you might think that you know that sort of makes it very difficult to write code but it turns out no it what it actually does is it makes it much easier for the compiler to do a whole lot of optimizations that could not otherwise have been done okay i'm not going to get into that right now but for those of you who are interested functional programming languages fundamentally you know don't have this problem of write after read uh, hazards right and and they allow you to do a lot more optimizations because of that or rather they make it easier to do certain kinds of optimizations. Going forward in the dependencies, if I do a of i is equal to a of i minus one in the first case, right? What I will actually end up doing is copy a of minus one to all values, right? Because a of zero will get the value of a of minus one. After that, i will become equal to one, which means a of one will become equal to a of zero, which is a of minus one and so on, right? Whereas this, on the other hand, effectively does something which is the equivalent of a shift register, right? So all values that you have over here will basically end up going like this. Right? A of i gets the value a of i plus one. Okay. Now a shift register obviously is a hardware construct, but it functionally this is essentially what it's trying to do. Right? 
Now, there is also something else called a loop carried dependency, right? which is something uh, important to keep in mind. This is also related to the concept of you know, IIR filters and so on that we, uh, things that have feedback in some sense. right? Now, look at the two loops that I have over here. Effectively, what I am saying in this case is, I'm assigning a value to B of I over here, but the value that I'm using for updating A of I is the next one, B of I minus one, something that was updated in a previous iteration of the loop. Okay, so there is clearly a dependency. A of I does depend on B, but it depends on B from a previous iteration, right? You can think of this as sort of, I mean, if you were to draw a data flow graph corresponding to this, you would sort of say that there is a one sample delay between the production of B and its consumption by A, right? And we call this an interloop iteration because effectively what it means is that the two statements that are present inside this loop, right, do not have a direct dependency. But on the other hand, there is a dependency from one iteration of the loop to the next. So if you think of the entire loop as having you know, some kind of set of operations over here, this is the loop body. This is an inter loop dependency, right? It says that something which is produced at the end of that loop is now being used somewhere else in the next iteration of the loop. But if you look at the second part of the code, then essentially what this says is, I have some part of the code over here, and this is now an intra loop, right? Whatever I assign to B over here is now being used again at this point. Okay, so the dependency lies within the loop itself. Okay, so this kind of interloop versus intraloop dependency, as you might imagine, you know, it's uh, it makes sense to sort of think of it in terms of the uh, sample delay, right, on a uh, on an edge in a data flow graph. But intuitively, all that it means is that you know you can actually have the situation where all the operations within the loop body, in the case of when you have an interloop dependency. It pretty much means that uh, the operations within the loop body probably do not depend on each other. Whereas intra loop means that the order of operations over here is important. You need to make sure that they happen in the correct corresponding order. 